These blast points, too accurate for sand people. Only Imperial Stormtroopers are so precise. Here's a look at the Hot Toys Star Wars. This is the Stormtrooper Deluxe Version 6 scale figure. The product code for the Stormtrooper is MMS515, and if you're looking to build up your empire to take over the galaxy, you can currently pick up the Stormtrooper over at AlterEgoComics.com. Before we pursue the rebel scum, first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the stormtrooper stands. So I'm going to take the tape measure and put it right to the very top of the helmet of the stormtrooper and stop it right there. One thing I want to mention though is depending on how you stand your stormtrooper or really any figure that we look at on this channel will certainly dictate how tall the figure stands. Currently I'm sitting at clocking the figure at about 11.7. In theory, though, if you were to bring the legs closer together, that would also increase the height of the figure. It's just the way it is. Uh, I don't normally stand my figures completely straight, so at the very least, what I try to do with giving you guys dimensions like this, is I usually put them in at least a relaxed or slightly spread leg museum pose, as that being the unit of measurement. You probably could even add a couple little notches on top of that, but we're going to go ahead with 11.7 as the height of the stormtrooper here. And switching that over to centimeters, you're looking at almost 30 centimeters in height, 29.8 to be exact. The figure comes with a rather familiar looking display stand we have certainly seen before. Although I think when we have seen this before, this deco that's featured on the top of this rectangular base usually has been a place card which you would put on top of the base, and then the actual base itself would just be a, a standard basic black stand. Here it's actually a case where this is sculpted in. You can't replace this. You can certainly add on to it. There's a lot of cool things that are gonna go behind it, but this itself is gonna stay sculpted into the actual base. The only problem with that though is, as we've looked at figures in the past, like Luke Skywalker, for example, he's had this deco, but it's been flat. So if you put them side by side to one another, this will kind of stand out like a sore thumb in almost a more positive way, because at least here it's sculpted in. And like I said, it's not just a place card. Speaking of place card or placard cards, on the front we've got Star Wars Stormtrooper. They don't really specify the movie, as really the Stormtroopers appear in all three of the original films. So there really doesn't need to be a new hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. You simply know it's from the Star Wars universe. That's good enough for me. And then underneath that, you've got Stormtrooper, a standard adjustable neck, and then you've got the cradle that's gonna support the trooper or any other six scale figure that you have. All you simply have to do is just take the figure like so, put it across the cradle, 
And then sometimes usually what I'll do is just bring it up like that. And then you've got a instant display that really enhances your overall uh, displaying experience when you have these figures on your shelf. One thing that is neat though, if you manage to pick up the deluxe version of the Stormtrooper, you get a little something extra. No, you don't get a weapon. No, you don't get an accessory. What instead you get is this paneled wall. How about that? This is a back panel wall from the Death Star. And like I said, it's exclusive to the deluxe version if you want to pick this one up for yourself. The good thing about it though is if you really don't need this back wall facing, certainly if space is something you're limited by, you really can just go with the regular release and you're not going to get this one at all. Having a close up look at the wall though, you can see there's indentations and you've got this frosted plastic underneath, mimicking the wall facing that we saw in the Death Star. There's a couple of little clips here that are going to clip onto the back of the stand. I'll show you guys that in a second as well. And it even has some deco looking on the back there too. So really, in theory, if you didn't want the light up stand as it is, you just really flip it around. And even though this is cardboard, at the least, it's still finished on the back. Let me show you how the light up functions work. You're just simply going to take the cardboard here and you're going to slide it up just like that. What you, when, what you then slide it up to expose is the battery compartment here and an on and off switch. Sad news though is when you are picking this one up for yourself, the three AAA batteries are not included. So I had, ended up having to add three Duracell batteries and installed it in place. Just unscrewed this, took the panel off, put the AAA batteries in, a total of three, and then we have our on and off switch. I suppose at least it's accessible I mean, for me, I would only need to slide it up and down and turn it on. I kind of would have liked, actually, if there was a hole on this side here. So when you did slide it down, you immediately had a little hole there. Granted, it would take away from the overall aesthetics of that looking like the back of a wall. But still, you'd have an accessible point where you can switch that on and off. We're going to slide this up just like that. We're going to switch it on. There you go. And while it doesn't look like it's doing anything just yet, when we flip it around, however, not to blind you, I'm so so sorry for doing that. Uh, what you do get, though, is a very bright LED wall facing that you could display the Stormtrooper in front of. Now, I did mention that this does clip onto the back. If you look at the back of the display stand, you have these two little notches. Those notches will line up to the little clips that are located at the bottom of the base. You just slide the base on top of it. It might actually even be easier if you just tilt it slightly so you can see where you're going. And you just kind of line those two tab points up. Like that and like that. It seems relatively secure. I certainly wouldn't be shaking it too much. But at the very least, like I said, you've got yourself a neat looking diorama display base. Something that's really cool, and if you got enough budget, of course, permitting, if you're able to get more stormtroopers, you could build yourself a really nice back wall facing. Not only could you put stormtroopers in front of, but you could put things like the Emperor, you could put Luke in shackles, you could even put Lord Vader in front of it as well. The other neat thing about it too is that you've got these little side tabs on either side here. If you push them at the top like that, you can bring these tabs out, pop it up. Maybe I'll just pop this section up. So this one's a little harder to get out. And there you go, swing those out. And then what you can do is you can then take this section and clip it on to the other wall. So essentially this would be clipping onto this and so on and so forth. Until like I said, you've got yourself a full wall facing. Of course, Hot Toys being a little bit more on the expensive side, it's not simply the easiest case of army building these, but I do like the fact that they give you something to work towards. I mean, really, if you're a big Star Wars fan and your thing is solely six scale figures, most definitely you could pick up, as most people would probably want to do anyways, pick up multiple versions of the six scale release here of the Deluxe Stormtrooper. And then along with that, you can, like I said, could build yourself a rather impressive background to all your six scale figures in the foreground. Being that Stormtrooper comes fairly light in the department of accessories, I figured we would have a look at those first and foremost, and then we would get further in depth, having a look at all the details on this six scale figure release. 
The first thing we'll have a look at, the most tried and go-to weapon of choice for the Stormtrooper. He or it, we don't have to necessarily specify a gender for this, the Stormtrooper comes with the E-11 blaster rifle, which was actually based on a Sterling submachine gun. It does have the front section that does swing out, though we don't really see much of that actually used in the film. Generally, for the time that we do see Stormtroopers, we generally see them holding the gun just simply like that. It's done nicely, actually. What looks to be po possibly black plastic, and they simply have just gone over and dry brushed to bring out some of those really intricate details that you would expect to find with a Hot Toys release. It does have very movie-accurate details and does look quite stellar. The thing about it, though, is the blaster rifle, pretty much once you remove the front section, the swing-out guard, uh, does have a tough time to actually tap back into place. There's a little notch right there, a little slot, and there's a tab right there that snaps, in theory, both together. Sometimes, though, when you are moving the figure or trying to put this into his hand, the blaster rifle, the front swing guard, actually does come loose and comes away from the blaster rifle. The next thing we'll have a look at is the canister that would go onto the back of the Stormtrooper. I'll show you guys where that goes in a second. Debated over the years from fans of the fandom as to what exactly this is. Some people have said it's a beradium core code key thermal detonator. Other, people's have, other people have said it's an actual oxygen tank so that the suit itself could be self-contained. Early scripted ideas really tossed around the idea that this would have been a laser sword, or at least I guess what would have held a laser sword. They really kind of wanted to get away from that because they didn't want every single person in the movie to have a laser weapon. So I think ultimately it just resorted to being unexplained in the series, though books and visual guides after the fact will toss back the idea kind of between it being an oxygen tank and the previously mentioned thermal detonator. Either way, though, it's nicely detailed for what simplified it is. It's just basically just a canister with some additional gray. You've got the metal clips on the back here on either side. That's going to clip onto its belt. And again, you've got some nice detailing there on the front. Where you do put it on the Stormtrooper, you guys already know by now, but just for people that are new to the Star Wars, you're just basically going to take these clips, see on either side here, and you're going to fit it or rest it down against this fabric belt. It stays in place well enough. The only thing though is I've noticed the several times that I've moved and banged the figure or if I've just moved the limbs, turned the torso or anything along those lines, this canister falls off a little too much. It is in a sense clipped on, I guess in the way that it would have been clipped on in the film, but I kind of would have dug, I think more so, the use of Velcro or possibly magnets, just so that this wasn't gonna move and fall off in the process. I guess while we're actually looking at the Stormtrooper before we look at the rest of his accessories, it's pretty much just hands. The other thing he does have is the holster on the back. I know I really wasn't going to specify a gender for the Stormtroopers, but most of them have all been male uh, characters. Of course, as the series expands off into novels and stuff like that, we've also seen female Stormtroopers, but... Uh, for the purpose of this review, I'll just call them male stormtroopers. But he does have a harness located on the back, a holster, I should say, located on the back, that you can then take the blaster and you can fit this into place. It doesn't seem the most easiest of tasks because really, like I said before, when we we're having a look at the blaster, if I just get the stormtrooper to stay, stay still for a second, when you are putting this into the holster, what it often at times does is it clips the front and it ends up pulling this away from itself. So you just want to be careful when you are putting this into the holster. I actually find it is helpful if you just kind of kind of pinch the holster open on your own. And then while that is open, very carefully feed the blaster through. The snap fastener on the front does also kind of get in the way of things. So you might find yourself just fighting and pulling that out of the way. While your other hand, on the other hand, is trying to force open the holster and as you feed that through. Once you're about halfway through, you're good as go, good as ready to go, and then you can just close off that holster. This is actually done in magnets, speaking of magnets, and that just attaches in place like, like so, and basically just contains the blaster in place. I wish the same magnet mentality was actually used here as well. Well, again, the clip is somewhat useful, any bit of clipping and banging will most definitely knock this off when you are posing and displaying your figure. 
the last thing we'll look at is the series of interchangeable hands that come included with the figure. Currently, I've got relaxed hands in the sockets. It's not technically what it comes out of the packaging with. It seems most of the time when you get these six scale figure releases, when you get them out of the packaging, usually they're defaulted to fists. The Stormtrooper was no exception. I just took the fists off and displayed it with more relaxed hands. If anything, I'm probably not going to be displaying it with uh, actual fist hands because there's a lot of other cool stuff you could do with it instead. For starters, for example, you do have trigger firing hands suited for holding the blaster. Depending on which way that you, which side arm you want to display the side arm with would certainly dictate which hand you want to use. The neat thing about it though is you can use then those relaxed hands to kind of brace and hold the blaster with the other hand. Uh, the other thing it does come, or he, or whoever comes included with, also comes with a almost flat hand. It's not almost flat. Well, it is almost flat. It's not completely flat, but it's slightly more relaxed than the ones that are right there. I guess this would be ideal if you just want to have the arm draping. You could display the hand like this. Or, like I said, you could also display it sort of holding the undercarriage, the bottom section of the blaster in hand. I'll show you how that is displayed right now. No, no, the Stormtrooper didn't lose his hand in battle. I simply just took the hand off to replace it with the one I want to use. To show you guys how to install the blaster into the hand, I find it's much easier if you take the hand that you already want to use and don't put it on the socket just yet. Take the hand and manipulate it around the handle of the blaster. Just slide it down like so. And because these hands are fairly soft to start off with, you can then quite easily take the trigger firing finger and just pair it up with the trigger on the blaster. Once everything's lined up like so, it's a lot easier to then put the hand into the socket than trying to do it the other way around. So we're gonna go ahead and just line everything up. The thing to note about the armor is because it, like the movie, it really doesn't attach to anything. It just slides over top of the sleeves. You'll find yourself kind of shifting the armor in the process of replacing the hands. So just kind of hold back like this, the forearm guard, and just kind of line the hand back up into the peg. And because this is a fairly articulated figure, getting the elbow bend and trying to manipulate it around, of course, the armor there, you can get in actually some pretty successful, realistic poses. Like for example, if you want to have the stormtrooper firing the gun or arming it at some rebel troopers, you can certainly pull off that look rather successfully. And that's probably how I'm going to display the figure uh, if I am eventually going to be setting up the Star Wars diorama that I really want to set up. I'll probably have like the Emperor, I'll maybe have the Stormtrooper here along with Luke in shackles, and maybe I'll have Darth Vader in the background. But either way though, it may lend itself to the idea of possibly picking up another one of these, so I can actually have a Stormtrooper on either side. Even if I have one, or even if I have two, I'll likely probably, like I said, display the Stormtrooper with the blaster in his hand, like you see right here. So let's get a close look at the Stormtrooper. One thing I did do though, before moving forward with this review, I took the blasted tank off. Just because those clips, these little clips here, don't, don't hold nearly enough. Displaying the figure is one thing, reviewing the figure and moving things around on it. This thing was falling off way too frequently for my liking, so I simply just left it off for the rest of this review. As for the armor on the Stormtrooper, it's nicely accurate to the way it appears in the film. It gets moderately actually scuffed and dirty as it moves further down on the suit. In fact, like the legs and the feet, for example, get a little bit more weathering and dirt and debris on it than the top section of the Stormtrooper. Why don't we start with the helmet and then we'll work our way down. The helmet is nicely done here on the Stormtrooper. Jarring at first, I have to admit that it does have these lime green goggles uh, for the openings of its helmet. I really don't picture that to be the case on the Stormtrooper, but then when I go back and look at the film, it's really a matter of where the lighting is hitting it. Sometimes it actually comes across a different color than others, and uh, here they ended up going with the, the root of a green tinted uh, plastic, which again kind of looks throwing, it throws me off a little bit, because often at times I want to picture the Stormtrooper being with black goggles, not necessarily green. Uh, it's nicely done though on the helmet itself. One thing I did want to show you though is we just take the helmet off. I guess if you wanted to, if you had a Luke Skywalker or you had a Han Solo, 
easily you could just swap this out. I'm pretty certain it uses the same sort of ball joint system. I want to show you what the interior looks like. There's not a whole lot going on, but at least I wanted to show you guys what it looked like. There are the green interior goggles or the visored the eye opening sections there for the uh, the helmet and you've got a big socket that's going to connect again to that ball joint it's pretty hollow I have to admit but then again you're really only going to be looking at it like this you'll not likely even when you put it back onto the ball joint very easily I might also add you're really not going to see that it's a hollow cavity inside the neck as well as the collar guard here does a good enough job of hiding the fact that there really isn't a head underneath all of that uh, we'll also get to the articulation in a moment. There's a fair bit to cover off for how much this guy actually can do. It's a simple enough review to really cover off because really all of the armor and the color scheme for the Stormtrooper stays to the primary colors of, well, not primary colors, but the white and the black simple colors. And I guess that's one of the reasonings why Hot Toys added the additional scuffing of brown. It gets a little bit dusted here on the belts here on the thigh guards, the shin guards, and the sections of the feet. If you look at the rest of the figure, it still stays, like I said, relatively clean and pristine. And I guess it's a hard line to, uh, to cross because really, in the middle is a perfectly you know, equal figure of being dirty and clean, dis depending on how you want to display the figure. Some people will not likely want to display their Stormtrooper as if it's been out in terrain actually out on a field mission some people just really want to have it as if it's looking like it's inside the death star and because of that you're really not going to want to have the armor heavily dirtied so again they kind of kept it minimal really only adding a little bit of dirt a little bit of scuff in here on the actual thighs the belt section very little here on the arms and a little bit more as you get progressively further down while i'm pretty happy with all around the level of dirt that they've added to it the belt doesn't bother me too much the thigh and the leg pieces of the armor don't bother me too much the only place that really actually does bother me a little bit is the is the boots i feel like there's a little bit too much dirt that's happening on those little indentations those little creased areas on the feet i mean i would love to be able to go in and kind of just remove a little bit of that personally speaking i my own personal taste at least I would rather have these clean myself. Keep the dirt still a little bit on the legs. I know that kind of contradicts itself because even like the undersoles of the feet do have a little bit of dirt. That's perfectly fine for me, but I feel like there's just a little bit too much happening there on the tops of his feet. Looking at the way the suit is constructed, it looks like it's actually just plastic panels sitting over top of the fabric body suit. Things like the front and back torso the way it looks like it's been constructed seems as if you would be able just to slide this right off. I really don't know why you would want to slide it off anyways because there's really not a lot happening underneath all of this other than just a black body suit. Things equally like the forearm guards, the bicep guards, and even like the shoulder guards. The shoulder guards are done with an elasticized strap, whereas these are just sitting over top of the fabric uh, forearms. Same idea with the legs. None of it feels loose. I mean, yes, you could shift and move the bicep and the forearm guards, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall off. Obviously, the big help is the fact that the hands are in place. Once you do remove the hands, you could slide these off. Again, though, I don't really know why you would want to. The only place that does get interrupted by a different material is this section right here. Instead of plastic on plastic, you get the plastic uh, body suit, the plastic guard pieces, and then you've got the fabric belt that goes over top of that. Now this is done with a Velcro closure. In theory, you could take this off. I mean, removing it only just exposes a little bit more of the, uh, the armor and the sculpting for the torso. So I guess I could leave it off for the time being just to show you guys some additional detailing that you may miss because this is over top and it hides some of that. Uh, getting a close-up look at the belt, but we're not going to spend a whole lot of time discussing the belt. I just want to show you how it's constructed. They've basically taken the front molding here of, I don't know if these would actually be canisters or if that's simply just the armor itself, and they just glued it to the fabric on the back here. And then the harness, the holster for the blaster rifle, 
it looks like it's actually been uh, fastened into the fabric itself. This just closes up like so. And again, if you wanted to remove it, you could. Again, I really don't know why you would want to. Looking at the figure's articulation, we've already examined the interior of the head and we know it's a completely open cavity. Because of that, you actually get a lot more range of motion than what you would with a normal six scale figure release. Not only can you actually shift the head back and forth, you can angle and tilt it in certain ways and also rotate it, but the ball joint also works in a secondary way because the ball joint's actually inside of the neck as well, meaning that the neck itself also shifts forward and back. It does, like I said, give you a little bit more clearance and a lot more luxuries with how you want to display the figure. For the torso, it does have a ball joint. The only problem with it is as you are shifting things, plates of the armor seem to butt up against one another. And then oftentimes, this back section here, when you are moving the torso, you feel like you're always fighting with these two pieces kind of rubbing up against one another. Even when you are twisting it back and forth, you can almost hear them not quite grinding one another, but you can certainly hear them rubbing up against one another. And that can be a bit of a nuisance. It does have a waist swivel concealed basically underneath all of that. And the arms move forward and back out. It does seem like he's got also a shoulder crunch, something that is nice that they would actually incorporate that into the Stormtrooper, meaning that when you are actually having him in a pose where he's holding the blaster, you get a little bit more allowance being able to move and shift that shoulder forward and back as well. Has a swivel at the bicep, a double hinge happening in the elbow, and then he also has a rotation all the way around, depending on whatever hand you decide to go with. Looking at the legs, the legs split at about a 45 degree angle. This is as far out as I'm willing to really go with it without jeopardizing, first of all, any damage to the joints and secondary, any damage to what already feels like a really tight uh, bodysuit underneath all of that. The legs can move forward, the legs can move back, it has a swivel on the top cut of the thigh, double hinge happening on the knee. And then for the foot, a very generous amount, though I still don't like the amount of paint that's been added to it. At the very least, you can rotate the feet all the way around. You can hinge them up and down. And yes, there is also an ankle pivot back and forth. You know, when you watch sci-fi films nowadays and you see their version of Troopers, you really can appreciate the simplicity and how effective the original Stormtroopers, really the blueprints, if you ask me, for all future Troopers in sci-fi films, but how effective the original Stormtroopers really were. I mean, they didn't have any bells and whistles, nor did they really have a lot of color when you look at them. They just had a really sterile white armor against the backdrop of really dark pitch black bodysuits. And through that, I think through their simplicity is really what made them scary. They kind of conveyed the idea that the Empire was cold and emotionless by having all of their troops in sterile white suits. In fact, the very first time that I saw them emerge onto the rebel ship in the hopes of capturing Princess Leia, I find they were even scary. Still to this day, I find the suit design to be quite scary, specifically in the helmet, which is really disappointing when you look at the stuff that Disney has done with their stormtroopers. I know they went for more simplicity. They kind of wanted to streamline the design of the Stormtroopers. But in actual fact, I feel like the Stormtrooper helmet design looks a little sillier nowadays than what we actually got with the original Stormtroopers back in the day. They look like ducks. Seriously, they look like they're wearing duck helmets. So I really do appreciate when Hot Toys can release. Uh, really, for me, my childhood here in a six scale figure release, he has doesn't have a lot of accessories, to be fair. He only has the blaster and he has the little capsule containment on the back of his belt, whatever you want to use that for, describe that as being. But through, like I said, the fact that it simply just doesn't have a whole lot going for it for accessories, it more than makes up for the fact that it's a Stormtrooper. And the Stormtrooper, must, I must admit, does look really good. The only thing I don't like about this particular figure is the additional brown that they added to the tops of the boots. I'm going to see if I can actually take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and maybe take a little bit of that off. Other than that, I'm very happy with how this one was released. And I also like the fact that the deluxe version came with the light up backdrop that you could actually put behind the Stormtrooper. It certainly does mean that you may want to consider picking up more than one of these so you can really have an epic Star Wars diorama, especially if they're capturing, say, the likes of Princess Leia or Luke Skywalker. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, 
The good news, though, is you can swing on over to Alter Ego Comics right now, and they have the deluxe version of the Stormtrooper for $242.99. Personally speaking, for being a Star Wars fan myself, I would go the route of the deluxe version just because you get the light up option of that backdrop. And I really think that that's neat. It's not just cardboard. They actually gave you a full out plastic diorama backdrop that actually does light up. And I think for that, that's the price of admission right there. So like I said, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you can head on over to Alter Ego Comics right now and they have it in stock for $242.99. Alter Ego Comics has quickly become my go-to place when it comes to six-scale figure shopping. Not only do they offer free shipping on many of their six-scale figure releases, but they also offer free double boxing. And what that means, at least for me and many collectors of six-scale figures, is it's less likely to mean that when you get these things shipped to your door, they're going to be damaged. Certainly, water damage can be a big troubling problem when it comes to six-scale figures. The idea of putting them in a double box means that at least when they come to your door, they're going to look as pristine as they were when they first came out of the factory. Uh, also, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, the folks over at Alter Ego Comics want to also offer you guys the coupon code of SPOT15. SPOT15 means that you can take $15 off your minimum purchase of $150. So in the case here of the Stormtrooper, that's $242.99 you can instantly take off $15 right off the top as you guys check this one out in your shopping cart. So make sure you use your coupon code SPOT15, save $15 off your minimum purchase of $150, one coupon code per customer, and a happy hunting and good luck and adding this one to your collection. Today we were having a look at the brand new, this was the Star Wars uh, Stormtrooper, not really specifically from one specific Star Wars film. It really could be any one of the original Star Wars from, if you ask me, the best trilogy so far, the original trilogy, not the prequels and not the stuff that we're getting nowadays. Uh, if you did manage to pick up this one for yourself, let me know what you guys think of the figure or really just based on this review and this review alone, let me know if you guys would want to pick up the Stormtrooper Deluxe one six scale figure from the folks over at Hot Toys. Also, while you guys are at it, if you are new to this channel or let's just say you're a longtime viewer, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Swing next door to the Death Star. Why not? Don't want to be near Alderaan. And uh, turn on that bell notification so that when future videos are coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. And stay tuned. Just between you and me and whoever else is listening, uh, there may be a Jedi present. Uh, just between you and me, there's going to be a whole bunch of six scale figure reviews coming soon to this channel. So keep your peepers peeled. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.